Hey everyone, it's Justin, America's Honest Tax Accountant from Number Crunch Nerds. Welcome to No Tax on Tips Calculator. We are going to jump right into it. All right, so we're going to start right here in the No Tax on Tips phase out calculation. I have our single column right there, and then over here we have married filing joint. So step one is to enter your AGI for the year. For purposes of this first pass example, I have put in $140,000 for single and $290,000 for married filing joint. Step two is going to be to enter your tax exempt interest from municipal bonds for the year. Tax exempt interest is usually one of the add back modifications to arrive at MAGI for many purposes. And I am expecting that the same thing will be true for purposes of the no tax on tips calculation. So for purposes of this first pass, I have just put in $10,000 for both single and married filing joint. Now next up, there is a placeholder for other modifications to arrive at MAGI. We will see what other items, if any, the IRS will require to be added back to or subtracted from AGI for this purpose in order to arrive at MAGI right here. But for the time being, I'm just going to leave this line as a placeholder with zero dollars as the adjustment. Okay, next up we have our MAGI line. That that is going to be the sum of AGI plus the tax exempt interest plus any other adjustments that the IRS might require us to make. For this first example, we now have $150,000 for single and $300,000 for married filing joint. Now I have intentionally caused the income to be these amounts right here for this first pass because the phase out range for this deduction begins at $150K for single and $300K for married married filing joint. So those phase out thresholds will be right here on this line and those are fixed numbers. They don't change as part of the calculation. All right, on the next line we have our over the limit dollar amount. So if I go back up here to the AGI for single, let's just go ahead and change this to $160,000. You can see that 160 plus 10 gives us MAGI of 170. The phase out threshold is 150. Therefore, we are over the limit by $20,000. Now on the next line, we have our over the limit factor. The limit on your ability to take this deduction will get phased out in $1,000 increments for every $1,000 that you are over the limit. So as you can see right here, we are $20,000 over the limit. The phase out, as I mentioned, occurs in $1,000 increments for each thousand by which you are over the limit. Therefore, if we are over the limit by $20,000 and the relevant measurement is each $1,000 increment, then 20,000 divided by 1,000 leads to a factor of 20. In other words, we are basically over the limit by 20 increments of $1,000. All right, on the next line, we have the deduction phase out per $1,000 increment by which we are over the limit, and that is $100. So in other words, by every thousand dollars for which you are over the limit, you lose one hundred dollars of deduction. So we are currently 20 increments over the limit. It is a one hundred dollar reduction for each increment by which we are over the limit. Therefore, the deduction phase out in this fact pattern is two thousand dollars. The exact same concept that we just went through with single would apply over here to married filing joint. The only difference is that the phase out threshold starts at 300,000. Okay, so now that we have calculated our deduction phase out of $2,000 in this example, let's go down to the no tax on tips maximum deduction calculation. Okay, so as you probably know, the no tax on tips deduction is capped at $25,000 per year. In other words, the deduction can never exceed this amount. This is the maximum. So we have that maximum deduction of $25,000 entered right here. Take note right here that from all the guidance I have seen, the cap of $25,000 appears to be per return. In other words, this amount for married filing joint is not $50,000 as far as I can tell from the guidance. Now, of course, the IRS has not yet released all of the final guidance and regulations on this provision, so it is possible this might become $50,000, in other words, making this per person. And we will find follow up 
on that as more guidance from the IRS starts to come out now that OBA has been signed into law. But for the moment, let's just leave both of these at $25,000. So going back to our example with single, the maximum deduction is $25,000. However, we have been phased out due to income by $2,000 as we calculated above right here. Therefore, in this fact pattern, our maximum deduction after phase out is $23,000. Okay, now going down here to the actual deduction calculation. First off, we have to enter our qualified tip income. Let's just say for this example that the total amount of qualified tips received by this individual was $20,000. So right here we have our maximum deduction after phase out, which is $23,000 that we calculated right up here. But your actual deduction is not going to be able to exceed the total amount of qualified tip income. So even though we would be allowed $23,000 of deduction after the phase out, in this situation there is only $20,000 of tip income at all, therefore the actual deduction would be limited to the lesser of these two numbers. If on the other hand I went in here and let's just say that we had $30,000 of tip income, then the actual deduction still limited to the smaller of these two items would be the maximum that we calculated after phase out right up here of $23,000. All right, so next up, in order to put qualified tip income on this line, we need to ask the question, what is a qualified tip? Well, let's go through some possibilities here. Voluntary tips with no consequence for not payment. Would that be a qualified tip? And as far as I can tell from the guidance, the answer would be yes. That is the classic definition of what a tip would be. How about number two here? Tips determined by the payor. In other words, the person giving the tip. If the amount is determined by them, would that qualify? And the answer again is yes. That would be the typical definition of what a tip is. Now, number three, a mandatory service charge imposed by the restaurant or establishment on you, the customer. Would that be a qualified tip? And as far as I can tell, the answer to that is no. A mandatory service charge is not an amount determined by you, the payor of the tip. It is also not an amount for which no consequence for non-payment exists. So to the best of my understanding, this would not be a qualified tip. Okay, now what about a tip that results from some sort of negotiation between the payor and the payee? What would be an example of something like that? Well, let's say you're over here at the barber shop and your friendly barber says, hey, I'll give you a $1 haircut if you give me a $40 tip. Nope, IRS. Don't play that. Once you start going down this path right here where you're trying to negotiate what portion of the cost is the actual fee itself versus the tip, that's where you're going to get dinged by the IRS if you try doing something like that. This would not meet the definition of a tip. Okay, and number five here, automatic gratuity on your bill. This is very similar to a mandatory service charge, and therefore if it's automatic, it is not determined by the payor, and also the no consequence for not payment requirement doesn't exist. So this is gonna be your general guidance right here regarding what is a qualified tip and what is not. Now, one other item to note to qualify for the deduction, the occupation itself, in other words, a barber, a waiter, whatever the case may be, or the establishment itself must have customarily and regularly received tips before 1231-2024. In other words, this is the provision right here where the government is trying to prevent people from reclassifying all of their income as tips. So if you are in a trade or business or occupation that really was not regularly and customarily receiving tips prior to 2025, chances are you are going to have a difficult time arguing that some portion of the amount of compensation that you are receiving is actually a tip. 
Obviously, this is not a black and white test. There is some gray area in here, most likely. And ultimately, the determination as to whether you're in an occupation that customarily and regularly receives tips is going to be a facts and circumstances based situation. However, the IRS is clearly aware that determining whether or not you're in the appropriate kind of occupation is going to be an area where people are going to try to stretch the boundaries of the rules. Therefore, the IRS, according to the law, will provide a list of qualifying occupations for this purpose within 90 days of the law passing. So about sometime in October, we should see this list coming out, which will help provide clarification on what kind of occupations actually qualify for this deduction. But real quick, it is already known that you are automatically out of being able to receive this if you are in investment management or trading or dealing in securities or commodities or involved in brokerage or financial services. If you are in one of these professions or occupations right here, you are automatically out. I will note this is not a complete list either. There are other professions and occupations that have already been identified that do not qualify for this no tax on tip deduction. So make sure you check out the complete list before attempting to take such a deduction. By the way, this no tax on tips calculator that we've just gone through is included with my personal tax planning template program. Now that OBA has passed, there are tax planning decisions you need to make before December 31st, 2025, which can impact your family's financial future for decades. You can join my personal tax planning template program at the link in the description below this video on YouTube. Everybody who joins gets lifetime access for a one-time access fee. So that's going to be it for the no tax on tips calculator. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next time.